Hello, my name is Lee Greer. I'm trying to tell the story of Sanctuary for Children in little bits and pieces. This is about what's going to happen in June of 2013, and it has a lot to do with 2012 when we were there. Some of these pictures are from a place called Four Roads Tamina in Trinidad. This is the pavilion where water is standing in the field because it's the rainy season. I'll tell you the story about how we found this place. The Lord had told me to prepare the team to go into the jungle of Tamina in Trinidad. He did not tell me exactly where to go in the jungle. He just told me what to take and said he would show me where to go. I'm okay by myself doing this, but when I had a group of people following me around, they had a tendency to say, where are we going? What are we going to do next? What's it going to be like? I had to explain that God only gives me so much information and I go because of faith. I've come to understand that one reason that things are not always perfectly clear is because our main connection and our strength is through faith in Jesus Christ and faith that God is going to do things in this world. If everything is too easy, I think we get like the ancient Israelites in the Bible. We forget where it comes from and we want to take matters into our own hands. We take the manna for granted. We take it for granted that he parted the Red Sea and destroyed the armies of Egypt and plundered that nation and had them give their gold and silver to the Israelites. In other words, all the things the Lord has done before for Sanctuary for Children, we just assume, oh, it's going to be easy. We're like children riding in the back seat of a car. It's not supposed to be like that. Jesus lives in us, so he sent us to go somewhere in the jungle of Tamina, which when I got there, the jungle and Tamina jungle in Trinidad is really the central part of Trinidad. All the unwanted land is undeveloped, it's wild. Jungle snakes, some huge, some of them big enough and poison enough to do you in. So when we were riding through the jungle and saw this, we knew we wouldn't want to set two feet off the road where you couldn't see your feet. It's the kind of place you think of as a tropical jungle. I had no idea what it would be like to take a machete and go through that jungle. I wouldn't want to do that, not when we saw it. There's a lot to this story. The story about how we found that particular place, the rain on the ground, how it was rainy season and it was not supposed to dry up, that's another story. And while we were coming back this year, that's another story. And who is coming with us? That's another story. All these things are not possible. The point of it is, six years ago, God told me the nation of Trinidad will come to Christ through the fatherless, that they will be the strongholds for Jesus all across Trinidad. This place in the Tamina jungle has the potential of being our first stronghold. One term that one of the members, Keith, of his storytellers, a ministry who documents the work of foreign missions, Keith called it a beachhead. In other words, you would establish a beachhead in an enemy territory, then you would have a place to bring resources, to go back and forth. You claim that territory and you can start to fortify it, to build it up and spread out from there. I can see that as God's plan, that we have long needed one place in Trinidad that we can own, that we can control and pour people and God's resources into it instead of getting on an airplane, shipping barrels, going for one week or so, and coming back. It is hard to explain this in the terms of how people see it. Because I am a person, I can see it in the world, but I also see it through what God has given me in dreams and visions, in His voice, but no one else can tell what I hear, what I see. I can only tell them, and then they can decide if they think I'm rational, rational and reasonable. I know Jesus' own family doubted him, and they came to take charge of him, that's in Mark, thinking he was out of his mind. I've been suspected of that a few times, but not as much as I would have thought, because the things God tells me are always so far ahead. I don't know if it's in my lifetime, or a hundred years, or a thousand years, but he does give me enough assurance to keep going, because I'm doing. 
this is all part of the doing. There are a lot of little details that come along with this that make the whole thing real. It is not the facts of we did this and then we did that, because after you already see it, what faith does it take to see what God, that God did anything? You could say, oh, people did this. Well, God works through people. You can overlook a miracle very easily. In the, in the Bible it says, isn't that the man who is begging, the blind man? No, it just looks like him. That's the way people think. It looks very ordinary. God is dealing with ordinary people, ordinary situations. But the one who couldn't see, the one who couldn't walk and was healed, knows it was not ordinary. Maybe they were the only ones who really believed this has always been going on. This is what Christ faced. He, he was here on earth. He's God in the flesh. He's here now. He's doing the things of God. Yet they doubt Him. They crucified Him. So it is not much different for us. By His power, He makes Himself known. We can talk. We can try to persuade. But we are in a different culture in Trinidad. It is tougher with intellectual people. Just come as a child. Somehow the deep things of God make more sense than these pictures of what is seen in this world because that is where we're going. When God says this is going to happen to you, you don't often know how. You don't know what's going to be in between. You don't know how do we get there. If you set about doing it in your own way, you'd probably find yourself building something of man, not of God. But if you say, yes, Lord, I'll do it even if it makes no sense, but if you doubt this, why don't you doubt everything before? If you start doubting, you'll get to a point of not even listening. So there's no reason to doubt now, not any more than what there was to doubt before. This is how we got this far. This is how we go forward from here. The best thing to do is to let God tell me what to do one step at a time. All these videos, all the work of this ministry is an example of that. I'll break this into small stories just for those God has already prepared who have lived these things, who understand these things. Knowing these things to be real for others encourages you that they can be real for you. If these things are all already happening in you, you, you look for the same things in this world and you see what God is doing here and you say, that's the same thing He's doing with me. I just didn't know that there was someone else, some other group of people in another country working on the same sort of thing. I've heard other testimonies and it's resonated with me. God is speaking to other people. Some are not afraid to say, I hear God's voice and I do what God tells me. Often when I obey, the things that happen are much like finding some person waiting there just as God said. The donkey's colt would be tied and I go find it and someone will give you an upper room. He can make fish swim into a net. He can make people prepare things. We do have free will, but those who choose to give themselves to God, to obey what He speaks, to follow His dreams and visions, He can do things with them. He prepares ahead where He wants His work done, so it's just a matter of going, finding a don donkey colt tied up and doing what Jesus said. So God bless you. Bye. Six parts.